Hi everyone, greetings from National Skills Network. And uh, we are continuing with our conversations on drone that we started recently by inviting few experts from the industry, which is into manufacturing and training. And today we have Mr. Amit Takte back with us. And this time he's going to address few questions that people are wondering about. So we thought why not catch up with Amit once again and check out about uh, 10 important questions, Amit, that have come to us, okay. and we request you to respond to them. Just to introduce you once again, Amit Takte is a VP Training and Technology from Dronacharya Aerial Innovations Private Limited, which is based out of Pune, and he's going to carry forward this discussion with few important questions. So let's get started, Amit. Sure. Thanks, Madhuri, for inviting again. I would yeah. love to answer all the questions which are there right now. Great. And uh, for those of you who want to know more about uh, the previous conversation we had with Amit, we'll be sharing the link uh, for the with the conversation in the description box. You can take a look at that. Uh, so first question that I would like to get started with is, Amit, why is it that drone training, drone pilot training is called remote pilot training? Uh, what is remote about it? Okay, uh, remote pilot training organization, RPTO or drone training. It's, wow. it's a very peculiar question, Madhuri. Uh, I mean, drones uh, and the real aircrafts, the major difference is the pilot sits in the aircraft and yeah. for drone flying, the pilot is on the ground and the craft is always uh, remotely flying. That's the reason it is called remote pilot uh, training organization or remote pilot uh, aircraft. So... Uh, the RPTO or the term which is very confusing many a times for many of them. Why it is called remote? I mean, it's remote is you are remotely operating the aircraft or the drone, standing outside the drone, which yes. is on the field and flying the drone. Hence, it is called remotely operated uh, object. Yeah. yeah, it's quite clear now because we were also wondering why is it RPTO is the short form that's used. Right. I'm referring to the Digital Sky website. Uh, from DGCA for some of the questions. And I would request our audience also to visit the Digital Sky website from DGCA for authentic information on everything related to drones so that you get to uh, hear from the authorities there. Uh, and uh, now next would be, you know, uh, like when we go to DGCA uh, Digital Sky website, there are many organizations that are mentioned. I think 23 of them. Uh, I think they are the ones who are uh, kind of, you know, authorized to give drone training. So That's is right. that the only number or uh, do we have more? Can you please no. tell us more about yeah. At the moment, DGCA has approved 23 uh, organizations to conduct uh, the RPTO, uh, the training, pilot training uh, activities in India. Mm -hmm. uh, this number might increase in future, but uh, currently 23 are authorized to do uh, the training on behalf of uh, DGC and give the certification to the pilot after completion of the exam. Okay. Uh, so uh, now these 23 organizations, uh, training organizations are located in a few states in India. Now let's assume there are people in other states who want to train their people in drones because we are talking about uh, drones being applicable to many industries in many locations. So in such a case, now let's say uh, Dronacharya Aerial Innovations is based out of Pune. Now somebody in Telangana, uh, in place in a district in Telangana wants to avail your services or start a training organization. How should they go about it? So there are two aspects to it. One is uh, availing the services from Dronacharya. In that case, uh, for the certification purpose, they have to come down to the uh, RPTO, which is formed by us here in Pune. The training will be provided at Pune because this, there are designated areas and there is designated locations which DGC has approved to provide the flying training. So there are two aspects in the training. One is the uh, theory aspect, simulation and theory aspect, and another one is the practical flying aspect. Okay. So the practical flying aspect happens on the field, on the ground, and the ground which is selected by the RPTO has been approved by DGCA to provide this kind of a training. So in that case, they have to come down to the RPTO and get those services, get themselves certified. Okay. Now coming down to the second question of uh, second part of your question is uh, if they want to start their own RPTO, 
Hmm. If they want to start their own training organizations, yes, it is very much feasible. There is an five. Uh, there is an D five form which is available on uh, DGCS website, which talks about starting up an RPTO. What all details are required by uh, the institution or individual to start uh, an RPTO in India? A detailed uh, uh, information has been uh, given in D five form. Uh, what is the location uh, details, hardware details? What all uh, uh, areas they can fly? uh the ground specification requirement then the classroom specification requirement everything has been clearly mentioned in that document if somebody wants to start their own organization they have to go through that document fill out that document and apply for rpto to dgca okay okay great uh, so um, you know i'm sure they will go to the website like you pointed out and look at the forms and the documents that are uh, required to be filled in so i guess that answers the question about you know who can start this training organization and how they can collaborate with you or reach out to you if required for their uh, training requirements now my next question would be you know uh, like drone uh, as we all know has evolved from defense has evolved from uh, other services, but it was not for so much of a civilian kind of a service, right? And today we are talking about applying it uh, in many sectors. So uh, does one need to be from an aviation or a defense background to get started with uh, drone pilot training? Or is it going to be, you know, for everybody, like we are saying, even 10th uh, uh, past students. So uh, how does this actually happen when you give the training to these people? Okay, so DGCA has uh, approved uh, the age limit of 18 mm. uh, for qualifying uh, the, uh, to get into the drone uh, pilot training. Okay, so there is no specific requirement of any educational background, any aviation background, any defense background. Okay, anybody who is willing to get into the drone industry and willing to get uh, the drone pilot license can apply for the drone pilot license. The background, just he need to be 10th passed. 18 years of age and should have an Indian passport. Mm -hmm. So these are the three requirements. Uh, if he suffices, he is eligible to get the drone training from the RPTOs, which are mentioned in the digital website site uh, on, on the digital website. So Digital Sky website specifies those uh, RPTOs from where you are authorized to get the training uh, and get the licensing done from them. So there's no specific requirement of having any specific background to get into uh, the RPTO training. Okay, that's nice. So anybody can get trained. And I think the training duration is of five days, right? The standard. Yeah, it's, it's, training. yeah exactly. It's, it's five to seven days, depending on, I mean, the, the type of uh, course curriculum they have. Uh, that's minimum of five days and maximum of seven days that has been specified by, uh, specified by DGCA. Hmm. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, recently in one of the conversations, somebody was telling me, hey, look, there are drones available on Amazon or like you can purchase drones. I mean, I didn't quite understand what he was trying to say, but I've seen YouTubers, uh, you know, who do travel shows and all, they purchase a drone and then they start using it. So from that type of a drone to many specialized drones, how does one get to really purchase uh, you know, as a product or do they assemble or how does it really work? Okay. I mean, uh, the question could be from two angles. One is from the drone required for training purposes and drone required for any of the commercial activity purposes, hmm. right? I'll, I'll take uh, this question separately. For the training purposes, so you need to have uh, a drone which has got a UIN, unique identification number. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's basically given by uh, DGC itself. And you can see that on the uh, Digital Sky platform, there are UI and drones which are available. So you need to have one of those UI and drone to impart training uh, in your RPTO. Okay, that, uh, that's the first part of it. Second part, if you want to do any commercial activity using drone, any of the commercial activity, be it photography, be it surveys, be it uh, surveillance activity uh, on a commercial basis, in that case as well, you need to have an UI and drone. So, which is a unique identification number. That's a registration number uh, given by uh, DGCA uh, to the person who is holding the drone. Okay. So, uh, once again, you will see there, there is a list of UI and drone which are available in uh, Digital Sky website. From there, you can contact the person who is having those drones and purchase it. Or in between, there are windows which are getting opened where you can register your drone mm -hmm. and get it UI and uh, linked. Okay. Now, if you are building your own drone, 
that's yeah. the third case and which is not a manufactured drone or bought out drone you are building your own drone in that case you have to get it certified by uh, an certifying authority okay mm -hmm. so that is as well available on dgss website you have to certify your drone from them and then only you are eligible to use that for any of the commercial purposes or even sell of that drone to anybody else who requires that drone for uh, the business purposes okay okay i think that pretty much clarifies you know how one can start uh, purchase or acquire and start using the drones uh, and uh, let's assume that people have started using it and all and uh, you know in case of the drone crashing or something going wrong or if it fails if there are an, if there's an emergency how does one face uh, such a situation it's it's all about the drone training course you are asking about me the five or seven days of course we are talking about the pilot training course has got a very uh, substantial portion on how to handle the emergencies and situations just we talked about what happens if the drone flies away it crashes okay so there is a set uh, sop which is given by uh, dgca a, a certified pilot n needs to know what all steps he has to follow if something happens in that way and that is part of the training which we are providing so the pilot licensing is as well based on how a person perceives this and how a person recalls this during his exams he has to follow all those sops which have been given so a uh, pilot has been taught to manage those situation and there is a process which he needs to follow in case of an emergency or in case of an fatal accident hmm. so they can manage on their own yeah the uh, is there also like uh, uh, services kind of things available right people can also uh, start in specializing in servicing the drone i guess right uh, when correct. yes uh, that's correct i mean that's a separate line which is coming up where uh, uh, the drone servicing is one of the uh, services which people are offering where such kind of crash drones or uh, the drones which are not serviceable they are uh, refurbishing it they are uh, Uh, doing the repairs of those drones and then uh, helping the client to get these air once again okay okay now uh, you are mentioning about training in much detail so since data analytics is a part of drones is does the training also cover the analytics part because you capture so much of uh, data right so that's, that's correct also so the pilot training uh, essentially focuses on the piloting activity but yes they do uh, during the training we do provide them uh, an complete overview of uh, what all industry and what all types of activities which are conducted using drones and drone data so data uh, processing part data anal analytics part yes at a higher level uh, uh, we are teaching them what exactly is done but there are detailed courses which are required if somebody wants to pursue that as an activity uh, to give or generate the required output for the clients they need to get in detail uh, understanding of that particular technology so during the pilot training we are giving them an overview complete understanding of what exactly happens in that technology but not hands on had hands on to the technology because that's a different course altogether a gis or data analytics or uh, uh, data mapping part of uh, uh, the entire uh, drone data captured so uh, these are two different courses but yes uh, there will be an overview which will be given to the pilot what exactly he needs to be uh, responsible for okay okay uh, now uh, can anyone fly a drone after training after training i mean so uh, yes yeah he is eligible to fly a drone but once again uh, he needs to have an uin registered drone first thing okay, okay. he needs to have a uh, 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 a license or uh, sorry uh, he needs to have uh, uh, an insurance policy for the drone okay and third thing he needs to fly that in the green zone so there are different zones which have been specified by government he is eligible to fly the drones in the green zone without any permission with a height restriction of 400 feet and then within visual line of sight so with these four parameters he is uh, he is uh, eligible to fly the drones once he completes its completes or finishes his training Hmm. Yeah, there is something called beyond visual uh, line oh. of sight, right? There is something th like that also. Okay, so I guess this is uh, clarifying about the range, uh, you know, within which you can fly the drone. Uh, so anybody can do it, uh, you know, whoever is interested uh, to take up uh, as a career also here. And uh, now, what would be the validity period of the drone pilot license when they get one? It's valid for ten years. okay okay yeah 
so after 10 years when they want to renew they need to renew the, the they need to renew the license from uh, uh, the rpto from where they have got the license there will be so, a small uh, fee which they need to pay at yeah. the moment government has decided in that way there could be an additional uh, brush up examination as well which might come up but that is not yet finalized okay this is so much like our car uh, driving license and all right exactly. i guess it works in the same way Correct. Uh, now coming to one of the most important and critical points uh, there are there is a lot of interest we see among people when we are talking about uh, using drones for uh, various sectors like agriculture sector or any other sector now in case uh, let's assume a farmer wants to avail the services or let's say a traffic police you know in a metro city wants to use a drone for uh, surveillance or whatever uh, how do they approach uh, and how do they get these services okay so there are various uh, service providing organizations available in india across mm -hmm. india so one needs to get in touch with them for this kind of services there are uh, separate agri services specialist which are providing services in the agriculture sector for spraying or for analysis of the crop soil analysis okay one needs to approach them and get avail their services from the private sector perspective and for the government sector like police or any of the forces they want to uh, use these services for their own uh, activities okay either they have to go through uh, the formal process by which they call out the tenders for this kind of an activity and select the vendor from where they can provide those services or even these uh, department as well approaches the private organizations which are available in their city or nearby those who are uh, eligible to provide this kind of services and are they are getting the services from them okay uh, yeah, that's uh, clarifying a lot of uh, things which we had around drones. So, uh, Amit, is there any other points that we missed in terms of the top of the mind FAQs kind of thing which people might want to know or we have covered most of it? I think you have covered majority of the things, I would say. Uh, these are the very typical questions uh, any uh, layman, non-technical person might come up with and you have, you have covered them uh, in a pretty decent way. Okay. Thank you, Amit. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise uh, in the area of drones. And we look forward to be connected with you. Thanks again. Thanks, Madhuri, once again for giving the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.